In season can be very tough for footballers to get in extra work. With a full schedule consisting of team training and one or two matches a week, how is a footballer supposed to further improve? Not only will I show you schedule examples, but a week's worth of full training with reps and sets. I will also show you real schedule examples European clubs use and program schedules I prescribe to my pro and amateur footballers. But seriously guys, who else do you know that gives out free high quality content like we do here? So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Yeah. Top of the morning, I know that you thought I was dormant. Woke up early from shots that was swarming a black. The first thing we need to set are your in-season goals, which are the following. Number one, match first. In-season, your main goal is to be in the starting lineup and playing to the best of your ability. Number two, recovery. Make sure you are recovered and healthy for your matches. And number three, extra work. After taking care of the two above, you can begin to implement your gym and speed work when possible. Now, here are my non-negotiables for training in-season in no exact order. You need to be doing strength training at the very least. Research shows us that strength levels contribute to lower soft tissue injury rates at as well as improvements in physical performance. Number two, your tougher sessions should be placed furthest away from competition, at least two to three days away. Number three, when in doubt, schedule needs to be more conservative. Number four, avoid high volume lower days. Like I said, I will provide in-season examples further in this video. Number five, avoid looking for fatigue or chasing the feeling of a good workout. Just because you don't feel tired after a workout doesn't mean it wasn't a good workout. Strength to speed is increased when the body is fresh and your workouts shouldn't add further fatigue fatigue to your week. Lastly, this is what your extra training should include. One, strength, two, speed, and three, jumping or plow metrics. For strength, we want lower volume and our goal is to gain tain or maintain. For speed, enough acceleration and change of directional work is done during training and in matches. So your main priority or your target goals are going to be top speed and resisted sprints or hill sprints because that's what you are not getting enough of in matches and we need to reverse engineer to understand what we need to be applying to our training. And as for the jumping and plyometrics, lower reps, which can include broad jumps, tall hurdles, single leg linear and lateral jumps, and weighted jumps. All right, we've gone over some very important details. Now on to the schedule examples. We will go over a training schedule for those who don't have time to implement extra training due to their, let's say, three to four team trainings a week. Two Italian Serie A club and season schedules will be provided in this video and one premiership schedule on how their training has helped them be one of the top two clubs in the league and how they have significantly reduced their squad's risk of injury. No schedule is perfect and you need to create something for you as long as you are hitting the three goals while in season. Lastly, I have more schedule examples, including some for the off season that many of my followers still use to this day. So make sure you check out that video. For schedule number one, this schedule are for those athletes who train three to four times a week with their team and cannot seem to implement extra training due to their high volume week. The best approach will be micro dosing. This is a schedule I made up based on some of my clients in the US and in Europe. Monday is upper body and Tuesday and Thursday is lower body. Notice the time range we give ourselves at 20 to 40 minutes for each training session. In this schedule, micro dosing allows you to fit in training with less cost of time and energy. In the long term, you know you are still making or maintaining gains because you're still getting in your workouts. You need to remember to be realistic with what you can do and understand that not every week is going to be ideal. One week you may be able to follow something like this and the next week maybe your team trainings are longer or you end up playing a scrimmage on Wednesday forcing you to only do one gym session and that's okay. You will set how much time you can allocate to train and stick to it. Donate for a perfect schedule. If you aim for something that's perfect, guys, you're never gonna be satisfied. Now, here's what a program could look like in respect with the time frame you have set for yourself. In example program number one, we focus more on gym work. We do the lifts that will give our central nervous system the biggest return on investment for those 20 to 30 minutes. We get in and get out. Monday is an upper body focus. Tuesday is squats, RDLs, and isometrics at lower reps at two to three sets. Thursday, Nordics, Bulgarians, calves, and core at lower reps and again two to three sets schedule example number two is a more balanced approach with strength speed and power monday is an upper body focus tuesday same as number one but with horizontal power and lateral power thursday same as program number one but we add in four 10 meter flies and some hurdle jumps which could easily be done before your team training if you arrive to the field earlier this is something i do with my athletes and the reason these work so well is because in training you don't get the chance to hit top speed as much as you think or at all and just in case you don't know what a fly is. A fly is when you begin with a buildup for 20 to 30 meters before landing in the fly zone where you should be at your top speed. If you don't hit at least 95% of your top speed during the prescribed 
distance, which in this case is 10 meters, then you're not training maximal velocity. This is different from simple 30 to 40 meter dashes because we minimize expanding energy from your start and acceleration. Even doing this twice a week before your team training can go a long way for your speed development. Up next are the schedules of an undisclosed Italian Serie A team coaches and researchers use to maximize their performance in season. Notice they train upper body and lower body only once for about 30 minutes and speed for 10 minutes, just like we did on our example number two. Because the performance staff Alex it's 30 minutes to strength training this will minimize the volume and potential fatigue while reducing risk of injuries and increasing performance example number two is challenging because of the two matches so check this out because i'm about to teach you something you have probably heard to never do sessions are shorter at 20 minutes and obviously for those who aren't playing can and should add more volume to make up for their lack of playing time now notice the lower body sessions on sunday the day after their match it is unclear whether the ones that played saturday have to do that session let's assume they did for those 20 minutes the practitioners figured this is the best approach due to their specific scenario i will shed some light on the potential reasoning here soon and this is one thing i would do differently i would take it one step further and implement that 20 minute lower body session the night after the match that's right the night after the match so immediately after the match you go into the weight room and you get in these exercises here's why according to research this method is slowly being applied at the pro setting the whole idea behind post-game lifting is that muscle damage is going to happen after football games anyway so through progressive exposure the players would be able to improve or at least maintain lower body strength levels across the season now this still gives them three days to recover before their next match more on this in the next example here is another example but it's time for the premiership team rangers fc after they began implementing this schedule they saw the least amount of injuries in spite of playing 65 games in the 2021-22 season this schedule also contributed to them staying at the top of the table by recovering well and making further gains in physical performance now i know looking at this at first glance it may be confusing so i will do my best to break it down in yellow all players did some sort of isometric pre-training session whether they played or not these sessions were extremely short where the goal was a mixture of improving muscle and tendon quality and activation lower body sessions were done post-match to take advantage of that window of opportunity that we talked about to target lower body strength like i mentioned earlier muscle damage is going to happen after football games anyway so through progressive exposure their players would be able to improve or at least maintain lower body strength levels across the season and we know this did not have a negative effect on the players since their total number of injuries went down even though they played more games their injuries went down from 53 from the previous season down to 38. The lower body session was an eccentric focus session consisting of the following. And in case you want to see more of what they did, here it is. And to wrap things up, here are some major key takeaways while training in season. Go lower volume, be more conservative, be realistic, and don't beat yourself up if you're not having an ideal training week. So if you want to learn anything new, guys, let me know down below or save yourself the trouble and get one of my programs to take your physical game to the next level.